Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. U.S. Catholic bishops say that religious freedom is under attack, not just here, but around the world. Leftists are now demanding to tear down statues of Jesus, but the Navy won't restore a whistleblower captain who saved his crew. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray the news with us? Here's our first story. Catholic bishops from the United States are now banding together to say that religious freedom is under attack around the world. Vatican News reports that the US Catholic bishops observe Religious Freedom Week. The acting president of the US Catholic bishops, their committee for religious liberty, gave a stern warning against discrimination against Christians around the world, in particular Catholics. Archbishop Thomas Wensky of Miami, the acting president of the US bishops and their committee for religious liberty, gave the following statement. He said, the right to religious freedom has its foundation in the very dignity of the human person. Religious freedom is the human right that guarantees all other rights, peace and creative living together will only be possible if freedom of religion is fully respected." End quote. Archbishop of Miami, Wensky, his statement came at the beginning of the annual Religious Freedom Week celebration, which runs from the feast of St. Thomas More and John Fisher. By the way, it's 22 June through 29 June, in case you're looking at the Catholic calendar and also the solemnity of St. Peter's and Paul uh, in their state of persecution, which is described in the book of Acts. During this week, Catholics are encouraged to pray and uphold religious liberty at home and abroad. The theme of this year's Religious Freedom Week is, quote, for the good of all, end quote. Archbishop Wensky himself declared the following statement. He said, quote, religious freedom is under stress throughout the world. Even in our Western liberal democracies, discrimination against religion in general and Catholic Christianity in particular is growing, albeit in perhaps more sophisticated and less violent ways, yet it's still growing. Political analysts and human rights advocates, he says, do include religion on their agenda. Most emphasize tolerance as if religion were only a conflict or a source of conflict. Or they speak about religion in terms of individual choices. If religion were merely the concern of an individual's conviction and were devoid of any social consequences, uh, that's how they speak of it, like it's not a matter of conviction. Uh, but just as the freedom of speech depends not only on one's right to say what is on one's mind, so too freedom of religion for the good of all must also encompass protecting those institutions that nourish the individual's free exercise of religion." End quote. The US Bishops Religious Freedom Week is also called a fortnight for freedom. Uh, was conceived in 2012 as a defense of religious liberty against threats both at home and abroad. Each day of the week is dedicated to a different issue having to do with religious liberty. This year's topics include freedom to serve in healthcare, respect for houses of worship, and freedom for Catholic schools. And that's the news, or thanks to Vatican News Report for that report. Let's take a moment and discern the spirits. Let's say in America, where we have the First Amendment of the Constitution, and these are American bishops, so I think it's appropriate, the First Amendment protects freedom of speech. Let's just, let's just throw that out there as a hypothetical. 
but let's say it doesn't re respect freedom of religious speech, then do you really have freedom of speech? No, because you don't have freedom of religious speech. What if the First Amendment protect, protected the freedom of the press? You have all kinds of freedom. You can print any kind of literature as long as it's not religious literature. And do you really have freedom of the press? No. What if you have freedom of assembly, but not for religious assemblies? Do you really have any freedom of assembly? No and so on and so forth with any other rights that are enumerated in the Constitution. This is why religious freedom is the first religion, the first right respected in the Constitution. Before it says freedom of speech, press and assembly, it says freedom of religion. Because if you don't have religious freedom, you don't have any freedom. Not the press, not the speech, not the assembly, not anything else. There is no true freedom unless you respect religious freedom because re religious freedom pertains to the individual conscience of the person who is making the choice. And if I am free to choose my God, then I can talk about that God, assemble for that God, write about that God. And all the other rights that pertain to my expression come out of the individual conscience of what I wanna worship and who, who is my God. That is why, even within the First Amendment itself, religious freedom is the only one that counts first. Here's what the Bible says in Matthew 5. Jesus said, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We're seeing more persecution and the, the bishops agree. Let's pray about this. Father in heaven, we pray against religious persecution. We pray against this rising antichrist spirit, which we've seen in so many demonstrations against Christian beliefs, against, uh, against God himself, Father. There's a spirit of lawlessness. When they tear down statues of Jesus Christ or the 10 commandments displays, or they demand that churches remove their stained glass windows uh, because there's too much religious expression there for their taste, Father, they are in the spirit of antichrist and they are not respecting our Christian freedom. In fact, they're persecuting. Father, we pray against their demon and we pray for our liberty. In fact, we pray for their conversion so they can have the same liberty that we walk in. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a short break. When we come back, leftists now demand the tearing down of a statue of Jesus because it's white. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. The Bible says this in James 1, that pure religion before God and the Father is to visit orphans and widows in their trouble. You know, we have been sponsoring up to 259 orphans and children in one of the poorest states in India for many years, but now there is a famine of biblical proportions happening because of the unemployment there. We are sponsoring people who otherwise cannot feed themselves. We've given over $10,000 to feed up to 100,000 meals to the poorest of poor in one of the poorest states in the world. We need your support. We need your financial contributions. Can you help us? There's somebody out there watching who could give $1,000 or even $10,000 toward a matching gift for what we have already provided. Please donate today. PrayInJesusName.org is our website, or you can call us at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please help us feed the poor today. You know, the Bible says in 1 Timothy 2 that we are to pray for kings and all those in authority. Why? So that we can live peaceful lives in godliness and contentment. In that spirit of prayer, we have commissioned 500 commemorative Donald Trump golden coins. Each one says, in God we trust. And we will send this to you for a donation of any amount when you call us right now at 866-Obey-God or give through our website, PrayInJesusName.org. There's a limited number of these commemorative coins and why would you have this? Well, every time you look at it or feel it in your pocket, we want you to be reminded to pray for our president, especially in this election year, especially with all that's been happening in the news, we need to uplift President Donald Trump in prayer. Call us right now at 866-Obey-God and for a donation of any amount, listen, we're running out, limited supplies. 
Call us right now and we'll ship you a Donald Trump coin. Defending your religious freedom, here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. Our next story comes from Flag and Cross, who reports. Left-wing activists who are out there protesting any number of other things are now also protesting Jesus and demanding that Christians and churches must tear down any statue of Jesus that they find offensive because it's racist. Is that what they're saying? Jesus was not white or racist, by the way. Jesus was a Middle Eastern Jew who taught us to love our neighbor. So the opposite of racist, right? He taught love. Nonetheless, in their hate to, haste to destroy all statues, some leftists are now saying that churches should remove any images of Jesus because they prefer communism. For example, Sean King, a controversial leader in the Black Lives Matter movement, is now known for pushing false claims. And he called for the destruction of Jesus Christ statues and Christian churches for their depiction of the white version of the Holy Family, which Sean King argues are forms of white supremacy. I mean, it's a marble statue, isn't marble kind of made, <laughs> made out of white stone? He says, no, no, that's racist propaganda. And that's a symbol of oppression. And therefore Jesus should be torn down. And he tweeted the following, quote, all murals and stained glass windows of white Jesus and his European mother and his white friends should also come down. They are gross forms of white supremacy, created as tools of oppression, racist propaganda. They should all come down, end quote. Well, who are you, Sean King? How did you become the authority on who Jesus is and whether or not we're allowed to have statues of him? Ironically, the anti-Jesus complainer here, Sean King, also blames Democrats for recent police brutality. Of course, we condemned the brutal killing of George Floyd and we condemn any kind of racism, but Sean King, the same guy who hates Jesus statues, also hates Democrats. He says they are the ones to blame for police brutality. He tweeted the following, quote, stop generically telling us to vote in response to all of the police brutality we have right now. Yes, we should vote, but we have to be very specific. Democrats from top to bottom are running the cities with the worst police brutality in America right now. And we voted for them, end quote. That's the news, our thanks to Flag and Cross for that report. Um, let's take a moment and discern the spirits here. There is a spirit of division. There is a spirit of, of anti-love, right? Because love is what unites. Love is when a neighbor says to another neighbor, regardless of their ethnicity or race, uh, we care about you and we hear you and we want uh, to feed you, we, we engage in food programs here in this ministry to the poor, not just here in America, but overseas. Um, we sponsor orphans and widows. Uh, you know, We love the poor of any color. And yet there is a different spirit, which we are opposing, the spirit of racism, the spirit of violence, which says to me, because I'm white, or to you, because you're black, or, or to anyone who is of a different color, I hate you because of how you look. And that is a demon. It is an evil spirit of division and hatred, not the spirit of unity and love, which Jesus called for. And where do we get this idea of unity and love and oneness? We get it from Jesus himself. So I think really the spirit inside of Sean King who wants to destroy Jesus is not a spirit of unity or love, it's a spirit of anarchy. What they really want is no one, including love, to rule their hearts. They don't want God to rule their hearts. They don't want Jesus to rule their hearts. They want selfishness to rule their hearts. Me, me, me. How can I be in charge of my own emotions and feelings and hate you because you're different than me? 
They are the racists that Jesus fought to oppose. And Sean King, I'm calling you out on that. The Bible says this in Psalm 11, they're destroying all kinds of foundational statues, right? The Bible says, if the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? Let's pray about this. Father, if they tear down the 10 commandments, what can the righteous do? If they tear down the statues of Jesus, what can the righteous do? Father, I know what we can do. We can call upon the one true God to influence even our enemies who hate us and fill them with love and repentance. We can bless those who curse us. We can turn the other cheek when they spitefully abuse us. Father, we can show them love. Even if they look different than we, than we do, even if they talk, even if they're full of anger and hatred themselves, Father, we return their hatred with love. We show them the love of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We ask you to save their souls and give them heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a short break. When we come back, the Navy's decided not to rehire that Navy captain whistleblower who saved his crew. Dr. Chaps will be right back with more PIJN News. I'm Dr. Chaps. Many of you have visited our online bookstore when you go to our website, PrayInJesusName.org. I'm letting you know, especially as a thank you to our faithful givers, that we now have a flash sale this month only where all of our products are 50% off. Let me show you an example. In fact, we're gonna to bundle together four of our best-selling DVDs, starting out with prayer. This is a spiritual growth pack, but the, the first stage in spiritual growth is how can I have an effective prayer life? And then, for those of you living at home with your family, of course, marriage. God's word on marriage, so you can have a great foundation with your family. We're living in unreal times, which is why we're putting in the Unreal Christianity series with Vince Dacchioli as part of our spiritual growth pack. And finally, how to become an effective Christian activist. After you have the foundation, this is how you expand and change your world. Each of these four DVDs would normally sell for $30 each. That's $120 value. We're giving it to you now for half price. $60 if you call us right now at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Leave a message or operators are standing by to take your credit card and we'll throw in shipping at no cost. We'll pay the shipping. We want you to have this spiritual growth pack, all four DVDs. This is a flash sale. You can also get it through our website, PrayInJesusName.org. Click on the online bookstore. The bookstore, by, now, by the way, now has 50% off on all products, including some of my books and other things we're not mentioning. But call us now and get the spiritual growth pack, four DVDs for just $60. We throw in the shipping. Call us right now for this special offer at 866-Obey-God. Empowering you, the grassroots activist. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. Our last story today comes from PJ Media who reports, the United States Navy will not restore, after all, that whistleblower captain who saved his crew from the coronavirus and yet was fired, we contend wrongly for doing the right thing. Despite the former Secretary of the Navy, Thomas Modley, who taught political science at the Air Force Academy back when I was a cadet there, despite that Navy Secretary having resigned in disgrace for personally mishandling the, fire, uh, the firing of uh, Navy Captain Brett Crozier, who was the whistleblower who was trying to save his crew from the coronavirus on the Teddy Roosevelt, that captain now will not be restored to his command after the Navy investigation has been concluded. Captain Crozier was the skipper of the Roosevelt who was fired for taking actions at sea during the coronavirus outbreak aboard his vessel. Previously, a board of inquiry recommended that Crozier not be relieved of his command, but he was fired by the CNO, the Chief of Naval Operations Admiral Michael Gilday who not only fired him, but Thomas Modley fired him before President Trump actually sided with the skipper. And then the Navy Secretary had to backpedal and resign really quick. Uh, well, 
Now they've completed after a full scale investigation was made and discovered that several command decisions made by Crozier resulted in making a bad situation even worse. So therefore he will not be reinstated because some of his decisions were incorrect according to the review board. The original decision to relieve Crozier was made after an email leak to the press, not by Crozier, but by other captains who received communications from Crozier. And they disclosed an epidemic of coronavirus aboard his ship, the aircraft carrier with perhaps 5,000 sailors aboard, when the skipper pleaded to save his crew from the virus. He asked the Navy to help them and did not receive the help he needed right away. But the final investigation revealed that Crozier did not releak any information to the press and it was recommended that he be reinstated. The most recent investigation showed some serious lapses by Crozier on, on second review, they're not gonna reinstate him, but Congress is not satisfied. For example, Congressman Smith, a Democrat from Washington said in a statement, quote, the findings in the Navy's extended investigation makes it clear the Navy did not respond the way they should have or as quickly as they should have to adequately address the outbreak, end quote. In other words, the Navy screwed up, not the captain. The captain was trying to do everything he could to expedite the response. The Navy was dragged, the brass, the admirals and above, were dragging their feet, putting the crew in danger and ultimately fired the captain as the scapegoat for their own mistakes. That's the conclusion of several members of Congress and our thanks to PJ Media for that report. Listen, I've been in his shoes, not exactly, but almost exactly, right? I was a Navy chaplain. When the Navy brass decided I should be punished for praying in Jesus' name, I appealed to Congress. Congress agreed with me and yet I was still fired. I was still honorably discharged. In fact, I was sent to a misdemeanor court martial for the crime of worshiping in public in my Navy uniform. But then, thanks be to God, 300,000 Americans like you petitioned Congress and Congress agreed with us and Congress changed the rules and the Navy was forced to repent. The Secretary of the Navy back in my day repented Donald C. Winter rescinded the same bad policy for which I had been wrongly punished. And despite our earning that policy victory, now the other chaplains can pray in Jesus' name. That was the end of my career. So Captain Crozier, I want you to call me up. I will offer you my prayers, my condolences, my sympathy. For having done the right thing, sir, it appears uh, you lost the battle, but ultimately I would say you won the war. Your sailors, because of your whistleblower activity, I'm just gonna call it, because there was a leak to the press, which got to the ears of Congress, they had to save your crew. They had to, under a different captain, pull the TR into port and get some of them off in Guam where they could be treated and bettered and now the crew is back in healthy and safety. And as far as I've heard, nobody's died from the incident. Thanks to your quick thinking, Captain Crozier, you saved your crew, even though you lost your career. You lost the battle, sir, but you won the war. And if the Navy brass have egg on their face, so be it. But you did the right thing. The Bible says this in 1 Peter 3, it is better if it is the will of God to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. Sometimes people do the right thing and they suffer for doing the right thing. And that's a good thing. Let's take a short break and I'll have a word to conclude the show. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. I'm Dr. Chaps. We're offering a flash sale on all of our teaching products when you visit PrayInJesusName.org. Click on the online bookstore and all of our products are now 50% off while supplies last this month only. But in addition to that, we're offering a spiritual growth pack with four of our best DVDs in one package, starting with how to have an effective prayer life, how to have an excellent marriage, real Christianity in an unreal world with Vince Dacchioli, and how to become an effective Christian activist. 
You can grow in your spiritual life with all four of these DVD products, normally $30 each. That's $120 value for half price, for just $60 and we'll throw in the shipping. So call us right now at 866-Obey-God and say, I want the spiritual growth pack. I want those four DVDs for just $60. Call us right now for this special offer at 866-Obey-God. You know, the Bible says in 1 Timothy 2 that we are to pray for kings and all those in authority. Why? So that we can live peaceful lives in godliness and contentment. In that spirit of prayer, we have commissioned 500 commemorative Donald Trump golden coins. Each one says, in God we trust. And we will send this to you for a donation of any amount when you call us right now at 866-Obey-God or give through our website, PrayInJesusName.org. There's a limited number of these commemorative coins, and why would you have this? Well, every time you look at it or feel it in your pocket, we want you to be reminded to pray for our president, especially in this election year, especially with all that's been happening in the news. We need to uplift President Donald Trump in prayer. Call us right now at 866-Obey-God, and for a donation of any amount, listen, we're running out, limited supplies. Call us right now, and we'll ship you a Donald Trump coin. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. Thank you, thank you for watching and thank you for supporting our ministry. Uh, this month only, listen, so while supplies last, we're offering the free Donald Trump coin so you can pray for the president. We're not endorsing or opposing him, but we want you to pray for him. And we will send you this beautiful golden coin with a donation of any amount when you call us right now at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Operators are standing by to receive donation of any amount, we'll mail you the coin. The Bible says this in Proverbs 3, do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in the power of your hand to do so. If you're able to give, please call us at 866-Obey-God or if you just need prayer, call us today. We'll see you next time. Today, I wanna to invite you to sign an important petition to Congress to protect military chaplains, especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. If you remember my story, you know that I was vindicated by Congress in 2006 after I took a principled stand for the right to pray in Jesus' name. But Congress never did pass a positive law to let chaplains pray according to their conscience. Would you sign that petition with me? Let's take action today. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best financial donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now, 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.